As we swim through this digitized version of the Olo Walu Reef, we will explore the different ways the coral here responded to these extremely warm conditions. Together, let's listen to their story and think about how we can work to protect coral reefs in the face of climate change and extreme events that have become more common. First, take a look at this healthy cauliflower coral as it goes through changes that lead to an unfortunate ending. In 2015, sea temperatures were two degrees higher than normal, leading to this bleaching event. Bleaching? You mean corals get cleaned? No, not quite. Remember how corals depend on tiny microscopic algae in their cells called zooxanthellae. Zooxanthellae and coral have a symbiotic relationship. This relationship can break down when corals become stressed, especially by rising sea temperatures. Corals will expel their zooxanthellae from their tissues. Without the zooxanthellae, corals lose their primary source of energy and color. The coral appears bright white or bleached. The bleached coral is still alive, but if the temperature stressors continue over a long period of time or become too harsh, the coral will die and sometimes become covered in algae. By 2016, this cauliflower coral has died. Let's take a look at different corals, where one had a unique response. At this time, the little corals we see here were alive. We also see another cauliflower coral. As we just saw, in 2015, a coral bleaching event was occurring. Can you tell which are bleached? This cauliflower coral and this lobe coral are a stark white. The brownish edges of this lobe coral are beginning to die. This lobe coral, which is the same species undergoing the same heat stress, is alive. When coral colonies of the same species or type experience the same stress but have a different reaction, we can call this differential resilience. Resilience means that the coral can resist and recover from the disturbance. Pause the video now to think about why this might happen. Resilience among corals can happen for a lot of different reasons, and not only just one. Sometimes it is because corals have different genes and traits that work to their advantage. Sometimes it is because different types of zooxanthellae live in the coral too. Other times it is because the coral might be prepared. Think of it like this. Let's say every week you surf a bunch of small waves. With practice, you become stronger. One day, when a giant wave comes along, you are prepared to take it on. Some corals have experience facing small heat waves that are short or not as extreme, so when a big one like the blob comes, they are ready. Since the start of the bleaching event, water temperatures in this region have cooled back down roughly two degrees. Our resilient lobe coral neither bleached nor died. This lobe coral experienced partial mortality. Certain parts died, but the colony as an individual organism survived. This cauliflower coral has died. Let's explore another part of the reef. These were two healthy live rice corals living side by side. Again, as temperatures rose, this coral bleached, but this coral didn't. This is an example of differential resilience. Almost a year later, we see green or gray areas where the corals have died, but we also see tan and orange where these two separate corals recovered and actually fused together. 
Our oceans are getting warmer and more stressful for coral, which is why we need tools like this digital reef to study our corals as well and as quickly as we can. That way, we can continue to learn about differential resilience, or how different corals respond to heat stress, so that we can find ways to restore our corals and create resilient reefs.